This is not a Seat Leon. This is a Cupra Leon because the, uh, well, the Seat badge is, I believe, going away very soon. And it's going to be fully replaced by the Cupra badge. And, um, well, it's a little more premium, better looking with, well, better engines in a way. And it's more of an Audi feel, even more than before, which is nice. Now, last time we had the uh, Cupra VZ5 with a two and a half liter engine, crazy rocket. But now we only have a one and a half liter engine. Cupra really has some nice design features. They made sporty looking, interesting models which aren't overburdened with an abundance of colorful, extravagant extras. In fact, as I always think, I find the subtle copper details really tasteful. The rear sees its brake lights stretched across the trunk and four fake exhausts. Whether you like that or not, a lot of manufacturers are doing it now. As soon as you sit in this car and drive it just a little bit, just five minutes, you'll immediately see how well put together it is, how solid everything feels, how well the steering uh, wheel feels on the road. It's quite light, but it's also precise. The uh, DSG, the gearbox is excellent. Um, everything is really quite nice. The seats are very supportive. I'm not sure they're the most comfortable ones in the world, but they're fine. The graphics are nice, the instrument cluster is quite nice with plenty of information. You get actual numbers on the instrument cluster instead of just having, you know, empty graphs. Um, it's just, it's, it's really nice. It's really nice to drive. And I know saying that it drives quite nicely is very ambiguous and very sort of, oh, I don't want to say anything positive or anything negative. I don't know what I'm saying. But what I'm trying to convey here is that some cars will still be quite nice, but they'll feel floaty on the road. Either they will feel comfortable and floaty or they will feel quite taut and harsh. But this one is sort of a combination of both good sides. It's also it's taut, but it's also um, comfortable. Surprisingly so. You would expect from something that lies on the road so well, or drives on the road so well, that it's going to be a bit of a harsh ride, but it's not really. So that's what I mean by the fact that it drives very nicely. It's not difficult to drive because it's a very light steering wheel. If you don't like heavy steering wheels, well, these days with electric power steering wheels, uh, power assists, that's not much of a thing anymore, I suppose. Um, but yeah, that's what I mean by it being nice to drive. And I think just generally, apart from how it looks outside, it's also good looking on the inside. Yeah, sure, I would have preferred to have the infotainment screen built into the dashboard. I'm not a fan, like I've always said, of the infotainment screens being, you know, just sort of drilled into the dashboard and then you know, standing upright. I like them integrated into the dashboard, like the Audi A6 had before, for example, or the Audi A8, whatever. Um, but otherwise, it's it's really a nice place to be. It's got interesting, cool designs. It's got soft touch materials in plenty of places, not everywhere. Well, actually, this is soft touch as well. Um, so yeah, it's quite nice, even for the passengers. And this engine, the 1.5, is very, very quiet in most cases. So because this is a mild hybrid, it has a very small battery, a very small um, electric motor, which I suppose helps you a little bit in some, at some points uh, to accelerate, but it also has a little bit of recuperation, um, which is especially evident because of this adaptive sort of radar thingy magic. It's not really radar cruise control. You do have radar cruise control, but I haven't even used it. Um, what I mean to say is the radar seems to be on all the time anyway, 
And when you're approaching, for example, um, an intersection or a roundabout or whatever it might be, just like the Audi A6 uh, I've tested quite a few years ago, it'll actually tell you, take your foot off the gas pedal and it'll tell you either there's, I don't know, a 40 limit coming up or a roundabout or whatever it is and it will first coast and then when it thinks it's the right time it will start slowing down to that speed limit that's coming up or because there's an intersection coming up and usually I would say I don't want that sort of stuff in my car that's just you know that's that's gonna go wrong but honestly I actually really like it so far it has been unobtrusive uh, or unintrusive and uh, it's actually helped so I just take my foot off the pedal and no, I still have to brake, absolutely. But in a lot of cases, you don't really have to do much because the car will say, oh, look, there's a 40 speed limit coming up. I'm gonna slow down and it slows down. It's really nice to have. So I know this is the Cupra badge now. Um, so before like five, 10 years ago with a Cupra, we always said, oh, that's a hot set of some sort, you know, a Leon with a lot of horsepower, 290, 300 horsepower, whatever it is. Not so much here, this is the 1.5 liter four-cylinder, thankfully it's not a three-cylinder, it's a four-cylinder turbocharged uh, gas engine uh, with 150 horsepower. And I have to say, I'm not a fan of these smaller engines, but this one seems to be completely adequate here. I don't know about reliability and such, but as far as power is concerned, it's good, it's adequate. And what I think is even more important are two things. It's very quiet if you're driving normally, practically inaudible in a lot of times. And secondly, it's actually not that thirsty. Right now, my average fuel consumption is five and a half liters per 100 kilometers. And that was doing roads like these, but also highway driving at 130-ish. So, I think that's pretty good. On highways you'll probably see about 6 liters if you're driving normally. On roads like these you'll see about 5.4-ish. Um, so good fuel consumption. So I'm waiting for a bus here to uh, get a move on. Oh, now it's moving. Um, all in all I have to say this is a very very pleasant, good looking car with a nice little engine. And of course the DSG which is excellent. And the Eco stuff, the mild hybrid stuff where it shuts off the engine or uses two cylinders only in some cases and so on, is actually, I don't mind it. It's, it's incorporated so seamlessly, I really, really honestly don't mind it. So, very nice car. The only thing you have to take into account really is the price. And I'll let you be the judge on that one. The base Leon starts at just under 30,000 euros. For a fully equipped model with this 1.5 liter engine, you'll be paying just over 46,000 euros.